Okay, so we are very, very happy to have now our third panel. Um, we have Theo Stamos, the Commonwealth's attorney for Arlington and City of Falls Church. We have Lindsay Brooker, Assistant Commonwealth's Attorney. We have Stephanie Siegel, Assistant Commonwealth's Attorney. We have Matt Foley, the Chief Public Defender for Arlington and City of Falls Church. And Rachel Collins, the Assistant Public Defender. So I uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Theo Samos, as Kim said, and I'm the Commonwealth's Attorney for Arlington County and the City of Falls Church. And I'm here tonight with two of my assistants who regularly go into juvenile court. Um, I don't go as often as I used to, um, so I do have my experts here with me tonight. I also want to give a special shout out to our newest juvenile court judge, Judge Robin Robb, who is here with us tonight. I'm so grateful Yay. to see you. I think the collaboration with the schools and SROs is a positive one, and the SROs work very closely with our office. And I think it's important for folks to know that um, when a criminal charge is brought against a juvenile, it typically is after a police officer who works in the school has worked mightily hard not to bring a criminal charge. We have a pre-approval process in my office whereby a criminal charge involving a juvenile is first brought to our office by the SRO. And after we speak to the officer, review the police report, look at the elements of the offense that is being contemplated, one of the things we often, almost always hear from the officer is, and we ask this question, you know, do you know this kid? Have you been interacting with this kid in the past? And almost every single time the answer is absolutely. We rarely, if ever, authorize criminal charges when an officer has had the first encounter with an individual who has purportedly committed a crime. And I tell you that because I think our officers work very hard to avoid bringing criminal charges against our, our young people. Um, we know we have, a, we have prosecutors going into our courts every day and two prosecutors in our juvenile court every day. And we do work very hard with our colleagues across the aisle to um, come up with a resolution that is beneficial to everyone. We take no joy in, in convicting um, juveniles of, of offenses and we work very hard to come up with dispositions that allow them to be held accountable for wrongdoing, but also be able to go forward and not have the stain of a conviction on their record. Um, so I'm going to stop talking now and turn my, the phone, the microphone over to my colleague, Matt Foley, and perhaps we'll have a little bit more time to talk later on. Can anyone hear me? Okay, it's hot mic. Got to be careful. All right, so uh, I'm Matt Foley, Chief Public Defender for Arlington County in the City of Falls Church. This is Rachel Collins, Assistant Public Defender, who's one of our what we call JDR specialists. So she's in our juvenile and domestic relations court a lot, along with one of her colleague, colleagues, Lauren Bryce. So uh, as you can see, a lot of folks here are today. I see a lot of men in blue here. I see, of course, we have our principals and we have our Alton County board members and a lot of uh, emphasis and we have our, our new judge who's gonna be coming on board, of course. And um, uh, there's a lot of emphasis in our community and throughout our country on public safety and that is a very, very important thing. Now, my role as a public defender and those who work in our office, our role is liberty, right? So liberty is why we have this country, it's why we have this community. On July 4th, we're gonna celebrate the Declaration of Independence. We do it every year. We form our government so that we can pursue life, liberty, and happiness. And uh, juvenile court is a, is a very, very, uh, how shall I put it, delicate area where ch kids can get involved with and can have, ultimately, permanent records, so it's very important for them to have good representation and to be knowledgeable about the criminal justice system. And uh, often by the time they get to the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court, it's a little bit too late. They haven't learned that process. And so as Chief Public Defender, what I feel is very important as a part of our role is community outreach, just like our police officers do community outreach to, uh, to educate kids about how to you know, live a, a healthy lifestyle, how to avoid the wrong types of people. Uh, what the laws are and, and how to avoid committing crimes. Our job is to educate as well students and parents about the juvenile court process and the criminal justice system um, because, again, it can have an effect on your children's future. And a lot of the kids we represent come from families. They may be broken families. They may have suffered from trauma. They may have emotional difficulties, mental health problems, substance abuse problems that run throughout their families. And uh, so we try to ferret out those issues when we first meet our, our, our clients who are in the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court and work with them on those issues. But 
what I want to encourage folks who are here who have the power to do this, and that includes some of our principals, uh, county board members, and, and things like that, is to include both Theo's office, the office of the Commonwealth's Attorney, and the office of the Public Defender in the, in the curriculum for kids when they're in school so they can learn about that process. Um, because um, it, has, it has a great effect. And I know in my neighborhood and people I know, when their kids are, are perhaps in trouble in school, they're going to call me or they're going to call another attorney and say, hey, my kid, uh, there was some marijuana he was found with at school, or uh, he had a, 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 you know, a buck knife with him that, that apparently violated the statute, or, or a, a picture on Facebook or on the phone that was inappropriate. What do I do? They, they can reach out, but there are a lot of kids who come from families that don't have that resource to do that. Their parents don't know any attorneys. They don't have the money to hire an attorney, um, and they don't know what to do. And so a lot of what our role is to teach kids, hey, you know, it's, it's like I guess uh, Hulk Hogan used to do it back in the day for uh, the wrestling. Eat your vegetables and be a good kid. So our, our message to kids is, you know, abide by the law, be good, responsible citizens. But if you're under, you know, the microscope of the criminal justice system or a school disciplinary matter, get advice. Your child should speak, be able to speak to a parent or to an attorney before being put in a situation where their, their uh, liberty and or their school record can become permanent. And so that's something that we want to try to encourage people to do because um, we live in a society where safety is considered paramount. And safety is a great thing. I've been to countries where they don't have police or their police are ineffective, and it's not a country that anybody wants to live in. But it's also if we overemphasize safety and not liberty, we're not going to be happy either. And we all want our kids to be happy. We want to be happy. Um, and so part of what I hope we can, we can start today and, and, and move forward with is educating our kids about that. We've been to schools together, Theo and I, uh, and other members of her office and mine, to do this. And I, and I just want to encourage folks to include that as the everyday part of curriculum so that kids know how to assert their rights in a way that is respectful, uh, that doesn't cause any, any additional problems, but also protects their liberty. That's all I got for the moment. I'll just pick up on a few things that Matt said. I think that. Um, you know, there's always a discussion um, among parents, and I've raised two children, and they've gone through the public schools, and um, AT, uh, a, uh, ATS and Swanson and Yorktown did great work. Um, and the SROs, I was always fortunate to be able to tell my two boys, I know every cop in Arlington, so I'm telling you right now, don't even think about screwing up. Um, and um, and that, was, that was very powerful. Not every parent can do that. Um, but, you know, I think everything that we talk about, about, you know, doing right and being good and respecting authority, that really has to begin in the home. Home. And I can't stress enough uh, uh, how important it is for parents to be parents. And, um, you know, and every household has to decide how they're going to teach their children to respond to a situation um, if a police officer approaches them in school. I have an older brother who's a lawyer in Chicago. He has two sons about the same age as my two sons. And my brother is much like Matt, Liberty, and, and I hear that from my older brother, which Liberty's a good thing, I'm all for it. Um, but you know, my brother has told me that he's, he, he schooled his two sons to say, you know, you always respect authority, um, you are never belligerent or, or disrespectful, um, but if you are ever asked in school, um, to come to the principal's office and to be questioned, I want you to respectfully say, you know, Officer so and so, or you know, Miss Miss uh, Miss Loft. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I don't want to answer any questions unless my mom or my dad is here. And that's what my brother has decided to teach his children. Um, so it, it begins in the home, how we choose to navigate you know, these early years and how we choose to respond to law enforcement and questions by authority. But um, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again in a, a, such a setting like this. You know, We talk about all these great things that people do, but I truly believe that the greatest work we will ever do is within the walls of our own home. And it really does begin in the home. And I can't say that enough as a parent and as someone who's been in the criminal justice system for going on 30 years.